OMG Bon dans quelle ordre ils vont nous le faire genre Pas trouvé la vidéo pour l'ingénieur T'inquiète mec De toute façon là c'est parti Trois, deux, un, let's go Oh, il nous mettait un trailer C'est le trailer de quoi je suis déjà hypé là. Y'a rien, je suis déjà hypé. Hi Tyria, happy Friday and welcome to Guild Chat. I'm your host Ruby and today we're going to be going over the three new elite specializations for End of Dragons that we showed you earlier this week. Uh, we talked about the Spectre the Untamed and the Mechanist. So we're gonna do a deep dive into those today. Um, for those of you who just want the overview, the skills, the design, the lore, we're gonna start with those. If you want the super deep dive, if you want all the details, if you wanna get your theory crafting started, stay tuned after we finish up with the overview of all three. Ah, c'est bien back over them and ah oh, c'est trop bien Ils vont faire ça plus rapidement que la dernière fois. Là ils vont direct nous montrer tous les spells, tous les trucs, de tous les trucs. Ils reviendront plus tard sur le Theorycraft et tout. C'est cool ça. So that question's gonna get answered. Let's start with our dev guest. Thank you both for coming back again. Indigo, hi. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Indigo. I'm a narrative designer and writer on Oula, Dragons. Pas... Um, c'est mal cadré là. Specializations and a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's why I'm here today. Awesome. And Cal. Hi, uh, happy to be back. I'm Cal, game designer. I work on PvP and World v World, and also did a lot of work for. Ah, c'est lui qui fait le PvP le, et le World v World. So Énorme. happy, happy to be back here again, drinking some water on camera. <laughs> uh, and I guess we've got really specs too. Yeah, of drinking to some water on camera. Je suis mort. Okay, well, just for, for like a little extra. <laughs> il est trop fort. Il est trop fort. We'll talk about the elite specs as well as the water drinking. I mean, I guess, I guess yeah. so. Thank you, everybody. Thank Cal for his sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Really appreciate it. All right, let's get started with the Spectre. We'll jump right in. Uh, Indigo, why don't you give us the background on the Spectre? Yeah, absolutely. So the the Spectre Elle is really fun sceptre. because it's kind of like some of the other classes. Enfin, du it's a it's le a total spectre. breakaway from the Thief in that it's the first Thief support elite specialization. And now what they do is they harness shadows and they steal the shadows of their enemies and then use that to empower their allies and heal their allies. Oh, trop stylé. Um, this kind of started tu voles les when, ombres de tes ennemis. First building this spec. He was inspired ouais, by a ça va être un support. Factions character that some of you might be familiar with, the henchman Panaku. And Panaku was an assassin, so kind of like a, the, the OG thief. Um, I was an assassin main when I played factions really? myself. I was. They're so cool. Controversial. <laughs> they're very cool. I know the ritualists are probably all like cursing my name right now. <laughs> um, but Panaku, should you have brought him with you to help save the Emperor and defeat Shiro, what we kind of did to expand on that lore was who was otherwise kind of like a, a the, the assassin, brutal Il est stylé, um, le, le, fighter. Le, le, le um, what he kind of decided in that moment was he kind of had a revelation and he wanted to help support his allies. So what he did is he spent years after the year, uh, the, the time span of factions no. learning to master this kind of shadow shroud to heal his allies. And he, he didn't do the best job. He tried his very best, um, my, my day to day. Um, but he, the, the product was sort of the shadow monstrosity that the specters that we now know in modern Cantha use today to support their allies with ally targetable skills. And before I pass it to Cal, we, we, there was a, a tweet that you mentioned earlier. The, oh the, the specters use a scepter, which is kind of a tongue twister and really cruel, actually. I mean, damn it, Carl. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was one of my favorite tweets. So whichever of you won, whichever of you made the terrible pun on the Twitter. The specter utilise un sceptre. Voilà. Et apparemment, c'est giga drôle. About specter with ouais, c'est drôle. C'est drôle, um, en vrai. <laughs> Thank you. I la I was mad about how hard I laughed at that. So. <laughs> I, don't, I 
I shake my head at you, whoever you are. <laughs> but but I, with approval. But with approval, I guess. <laughs> honestly, I, I love ridiculous puns. Me too. So I'm down. Thank you for that. Woo. Where you are, you made yeah. my day. Shadows, um, scepters. I will pass it to Cal. <laughs> actually, let's take a quick look back at the uh, Spectre featurette and just give a give a refresh of what we showed earlier this week. Yeah. What? Ah, d'accord. Il nous repasse la vidéo. Okay. Donc ça c'est sorti là cette semaine sur Twitter. All thieves know the advantages of hiding in the shadows, but specters know how to wield them. They are masters of shadow magic, using their scepters to direct dark forces in debilitating enemies. Ça a l'air stylé de fou. Hein. In shadow shroud, specters can tether themselves to allies, granting them a protective shadow barrier. Ah la 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 The new scourge The new The new scourge Shadow Shroud Ouais c'est trop ça mec Alright so that is Bah du coup c'est bien en premier du coup c'est trop lourd Take a look at these skills with Cal Alright thank you Uh so like as Ruben mentioned before we're gonna start off this wow. show with kind of like a more high level overview look at all you know c'est trop stylé. Oh, t'as tellement peu d'initiatives. Uh, so, Spectre, we have a uh, support thief, Scepter, Wells, uh, Shadow Shroud. There, that's it. There we go. Let's move on to the. All right, no, no, that's not nice. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Give us more. We want a little bit more oh, detail. Course. That's that's fair. Um, yeah, so support thief. It's very. It's kind of our first foray into. How does the thief do support skills? T'as uh, vraiment so un shroud comme un comme un écrou en fait. Oh, uh, wow, incroyable! Obviously, thief character thief is much more of this kind of uh, you know assassiny, bursty, roamer. Ah, l'initiative est bonne là, ok. Very focused on kind of eliminating a single target. So with Spectre, it became more of well, what if we focus on supporting a single target and really kind of creating this more of like you know kind of like protect the king. It's going to be great for like world v world, protect the commander, have a bunch of Spectres all. Les spells sont trop stylés, putain. C'est ouf. J'aime trop. J'aime trop le, uh, le, so le caractère design. Shroud, we'll talc about real quick. Le first design tout court. First, initiative pool reduction down to nine baseline. A lot of people speculated with that uh, based off the UI changes that came in uh, last patch or the patch before that. I don't remember anymore. Uh, but yeah, reduce the initiative pool because we are giving access to Shadow Shroud, you know, five extra skills. Oh, tu peux siphonner tes skills, alliés yeah. ou les ennemis, genre. Oh, so oh, trop lourd. Uh, and so oh, we also replace steel with siphon, and so instead of having that mobility aspect, we're going to have just a kind of a ranged ranged ability. And this is our first look at ally targeting. So you can see here on the skill fact, different effect if I affect if I am attacking an enemy or targeting an ally. And we're going to see more of this on the scepter as well. This is going to create kind of these modal skills that enable the specter to either go and create this support character, or you can just be more of this aggressor. And we're going to see a lot of condi damage coming out from. With the scepter and the shadow shroud kit, so siphon, use it on an enemy, apply some boons. We have some steel traits equipped as well, so obviously the hair all the steel traits. Okay, tu gagnes un peu uh, de, de shadow force back. Tu gagnes un peu de shroud classique. Targeting an enemy, targeting an ally, this is just going to give some barrier. It's also oh rot wall of venom. We'll talk about. Ça lui a mis fou le shroud. Comment ça se fait? Uh, so to build up shadow force, you can either use it obviously siphon on an enemy. Every time you spend initiative, that's going to give you some amount of shadow force as well. Uh, obviously, I'm a cheater. I just have infinite amounts. Um, <laughs> most players aren't going to be able to do that. Hopefully, not. No players will be able to do that. But yeah, it was like most. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> none. You know, I, I thought about it a little bit more. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so when I siphon on an ally, this is also going to be kind of like a marking me mechanism, where I've now marked this golem as my my kind of priority target, my priority support target. So when I enter Shadow Shroud, we're going to see that this tether gets created. Now I am tethered to this golem. I'm tethered to my ally. And every time, all of the the way that okay, I'll link the person, as I'm hitting enemies, we'll come back to these skill effects real quick as well. But as I'm hitting these uh, enemies, doing some stuff, hitting some enemies, we're gonna see we're getting some barrier in there, we're getting some healing, getting some might applications. Basically, as I the thief go aggressive in Shadow Shroud, I am also supporting my allies. So that's kind of the way that thief is What? the support character. We still want to keep it as this very aggressive playstyle. Les spells, les spells sont trop stylés. Les spells sont trop stylés. 
Uh, if you want to, you can also switch the tether target while you're in. Okay, donc tu peux, tu peux supporter qu'une qu équipe, enfin qu'une uh, yeah, qu cible en fait. Is available. Uh, so we're just going to pop out and pop back in real quick, give myself some more shadow force, and then we can go over the skills. So first up, we have the auto attack hunt shot. This is just going to be damage and torment. This is giving my tether target might. Ça fait des dégâts, ça met du tourment et ça, et ça met du self truc en zone. Ok. Moving into grasping shadows is another, you know, primarily ranged attack, damage, torment, cripple. Ok. Handy cleanse for my my tether target and also heal. Ok, c'est le deux sceptres du du rond du nécro. Attacking enemies while I support my allies. Moving into dawn's repose. This is going to be able to have mobility back. We lost access to steel, but now we have a nice little dash here. Tu dash, tu fires. Also gives your tethered target barrier. Wow, c'est incroyable ça. And it also fears enemies, so pretty powerful skill. Dash in. Wow, c'est incroyable ça. Off, get some healing to your ally, and that's going to set up Eternal Knight as here's kind of the big damage payoff of the Shroud Kit. Okay, le cat c'est des dégâts autour de soi. More powerful damage ability. See, chill, weakness, poison in there as well. It's also going to heal you and your tethered target per enemy struck again. Ah oui, d'accord, ça te heal et ça heal. It's going to be a delayed trigger. Uh, pretty long kind of set up into a nice little stun there, and that is going to give ah, instability. It's going to give What the fuck? Putain, on dirait vraiment un support. Euh... On dirait Tariq un peu de guild de lol. T'es lié à quelqu'un et. C'est ouf. C'est le F2 qui fait ça, Drac. So it's the goal of being enemies, you know. Du coup, tu peux tu peux auto attaque tes potes pour les heal et leur donner de la. Not not important. So you can see auto attack is barrier. Ah non, d'accord. Auto attack is torment. Pretty straightforward. Next up, we have shadow staffs. En fait, tous les trucs il y a ennemi ou allié. Might when I'm hitting enemies, a little bit of self buff, but also we can end up doing some damage, or I can give my ally might and also give them, you know, a bit more barrier. So we have a lot of potential to just kind of use auto attack, use skill two, and we'll see as we get into skill threes more of this single target. This is going to be obviously spending a lot of initiative to keep this up to kind of support that priority target. Uh, moving into the dual skills, so we have two: we have pistol offhand and we have dagger offhand. We'll start with dagger offhand. Uh, Twilight combo again. Target ah, ouais, j'avoue. Bien vu, ça amène ça. Kind of pretty straightforward damaging ability. Uh, a lot of conditions in there. Kind of a cool effect where you throw a projectile and you throw another projectile oh, and kind of combine the same projectile and hit the enemy. Ah ouais, Or, tu fais, again, tu allies, fais, tu fais une, une lame avec ta dague et tu l'envoies avec ton set. Ah, c'est trop stylé. L'animation est incroyable. Side, we're gonna have a combo skill here, uh, starting with a measured shot. This is either going to blink okay. away from your target or toward your target, depending on. So, Attends, il peut rappuyer là, non? That's going to flip Ça a changé, ouais. To endless night. So it starts off with a little emob. And that's going to combo into like this nice slow and torment damaging beam attack. What? Ça ça a l'air fumé en PP ça. Et tu peux te TP sur un allié. Donc donc sur un ennemi ça te fait TP out. Et sur un allié ça te peut TP sur l'allié. Oh c'est incroyable. Oh c'est incroyable. Trickery freight line to get a little bit more endurance there. A little bit more initiative there. Apologies. Uh, and then we also, I guess we also have a stealth attack because we're a thief. So if you stealth up, you're going to get access to Shadow Squall. It's going to be kind of this rapid fire flurry attack. So we see some poison in there targeting an enemy. And again, du coup, si tu veux heal beaucoup ou mettre beaucoup de. Of... Oh. Notably, that when you use a stealth attack on an ally, you're going to get revealed. This is kind of an important note to make sure that you couldn't just infinitely use this. It's kind of the same mechanic. Hitting an enemy will reveal you, hitting an ally will also reveal you. Et finalement, nous avons les wells. Les wells donnent un peu plus d'accès à AOE. Du coup, c'était le nécro, le voleur en fait qui allait avoir des puits en fait. Donc, tu vas téléporter à la location et puis drop le effet à cette location. Nous avons eu beaucoup de mobilité pour beaucoup de classes pour cette expansion. Nous avons vu Willbender avoir beaucoup de mobilité, beaucoup de dashes. Bladesworn a eu un blink. Ok, donc c'est tous des blinks là Et Mechanist a aussi maintenant des shadow steps. <laughs> just, uh, just framing some context here. So you know, thief felt really bad. Everyone else getting mobility. Okay, he just vient de spoil que le mécatronicien, enfin que le mécanicien, il avait aussi un shadow step. So the actual well effects, nothing too crazy, honestly. Well of gloom, obviously, you know, it's going to be a heal. It's also going to cripple all, cripple enemies. Uh, well of bounty, you see a lot of boons on this skill effect. It is one per pulse. What? It's going to prioritize giving you boons that you are don't already have. 
Uh, and if you do already have every boon on you, it's going to give you might. Well of Tears, nothing too crazy. It's going to be poured in, getting nice AoE damage. Uh, well of Silence, we have a little bit of a daze here. Got some daze on that daze pulse. Uh, okay, celui-là il cc, l'autre il fait des dégâts. L'autre il met, il met tous les boons du jeu, genre. Et celui-là il met de la barrière, j'imagine Ah non, condition. Ouah, mais tous les puits te TP, genre, non mais c'est un truc de ouf Et si vous avez déjà every condition, il vous donne torment. Finally, we have the elite skill. Uh, Les puits sont trop beaux par contre, ouais, t'as raison. Teleport in and it's gonna create this uh, kind of AOE pull. It's kind of similar to gravity well, but it's gonna be like more. C'est trop beau. Pull, pull, pull. <laughs> What the fuck? So a really big. Uh, oh, l'animation est incroyable. To really engage, get that big CC, AOE CC, set yourself up, set up your. Oh là là, ça va être ouf ça. Do a quick run through for the traits. Uh, starting off. Every, some people for, reminded me that we should probably hover the minor trait because it does have useful text, um, even if it doesn't actually really do anything. So there it is. There's your, your tooltip. Moving into Dark Sentry. Uh, this is the Rotwall of Venom that we saw throughout the barrier applications. Anytime you give an ally barrier, you're going to give them. Oh la la, healing increase on all two others. T'as 20% de healing en plus. Here's the healing bonus. Really identifies this as a support character. Increase your healing. T'as 20% de... Mais il y a de fait que... Il y a un peu plus de barrière, il joue avec Wall of Venom, et aussi juste la barrière est un bon support pour avoir. Quand tu passes sur fut, tu gagnes de la barrière. Si tu hits un ennemi avec une attaque stealth, tu auras une barrière pour toi. Quand tu stealth toi-même ou un allié, tu auras une barrière pour eux. Nous allons juste faire un speed run through these, since we'll come back and talk to them, we'll talk about them a little bit later in the show. Uh, second opinion, here's some healing power, bonus healing power. Ok, uh, tu gagnes du healing, tu gagnes de la guérison. Second opinion, here's some healing power, bonus healing power. Ok, uh, tu gagnes du healing, tu gagnes de la guérison. Condition damage, per condition damage stat, so Plague Doctor, potentially a really good stat combination here. Uh, next up we have Shallow Grave. This is kind of the <laughs> escape death mechanic that we've seen on a few traits in the past, where this is going to be for your tethered ally. Uh, if you are in Shadow Shroud and your ally would die, instead you will consume all your Shadow Force and heal them instead. Oh, uh, sérieux? Also, oh, c'est incroyable ça! Sanctuary mechanic, where if you would die with enough Shadow Force, it will enter Shroud instead. And finally, we have oh, trop stylé. Which is just going to be an, as, when you leave Shroud, Le deuxième truc là uh, consume the rest Le deuxième truc là Trop stylé Si t'es lié à un allié Et que tu vas pour mourir Ça consume ta Shroud Au lieu de te, de te tuer Et si c'est ton allié qui meurt Ça consume ta Shroud Et ça le fait pas mourir aussi genre. Enfin c'est incroyable We're gonna see a lot of Ways to get Shadow Force So Larchness Torment Here's your aggro trait Torment damage And Shroud gain Whenever you apply Torment Ok ça c'est pour jouer en DPS quoi En condi qu Ok improve Siphon Uh, so either more shadow force when hitting an enemy or increased barrier when supporting an ally. Okay. And finally we're gonna have traversing dust. Oh, la critique. Well trait. It's also just going to be heal on shadow step, gain some shadow force on shadow. Mais bon, step, le truc c'est que tu. Also, well, cinq personnes quand même, hein? Cinq personnes quand même. And the initial pulse. It's a little bit of AOE alacrity in there for this for this specialization. Gain de expertise. Finally, the grandmaster slot. Okay. Sorry about strengths of shadows. This is again going to be kind of the more aggressive. Oh, les dégâts de tourment augmentent de 50 pour cent. Here's some expertise. Here's some raw wall of venom. Uh, bonuses, so a little bit more damage potential there. Next up, we have Hungering Darkness. This is going to be a more of a single target supporty thing, where you're going to pull conditions from your ally, from your tethered target, and also cleanse conditions. So the heal. Ah, so ouais, pretty powerful effect there. It's also going to heal your ally mm. per condition cleansed. Mm. And finally, we have access to Shade Step. This one's going to be kind of a mix. It's going to give you a little bit more personal barrier when you siphon an enemy, uh, and also it's going to allow you to revive uh, revive enemies with siphon instead of just applying barrier and healing and the final note here incroyable if you shadow step while you have barrier what the fuck you yeah. your barrier and give that an aoe radius to allies so kind what of that yeah. again kind of oh, across <laughs> the bottom we see a lot of aoe support <laughs> le voleur, voleur is the new school so heal kind of super speed run incroyable the specter <laughs> obviously we have a, a bit more to talk about going into a few more details later in the show but for now we're going to hop over and talk about the untamed next Ok, ok, le, le, le voleur euh, chelou, genre. Chelou Bon, le, le rôdeur, c'est rôdeur ça Ouais, c'est le rôdeur. Les forces de la nature se trouvent dans un écobald, et les untamed ont appris à les channeler à travers le bond qu'ils ont créé. Ils ont créé des hommes de l'hommeur qui ont créé des ennemis dazés et off balance. Quand leurs pets attaquent, sont bolstered par la raw primal energy. The power of nature flows back and forth between the untamed and their animal companion. Ouais. Empowering their killing blows. Bah là, euh, ouais, c'est bien ce qui me semblait. Hein. Enfin là, 
J'ai le même ressenti pour l'instant que ce que j'ai vu quand j'ai vu le trailer, c'est que... On dirait un rôdeur corps en fait, un rôdeur corps qui, qui utilise son pet quoi. Donc on va voir comment ils vont le faire quoi. Indomptable en français. Ils sont en elle est en train de dire que, en fait, c'est la réincarnation de la forêt des Kovald, en fait, dans, le, dans les rôdeurs, euh, et que c'est cette magie-là qu'ils vont utiliser, les indomptables. Um, to protect the Echovald forest, but now they were now attacking their once friends. And basically the untamed were individuals that learned to harness this power and wield it to uh, conquer their enemies, basically. So this, uh, what happens when they wield it, if they become unleashed um, and they get really growly and primal and that, that energy is passed back and forth. Um, and before I pass it to Cal, though, we do have an opportunity to tell you about the pets. Yay! And the, the first, and we have four new pets huh? coming, and the first of them, our Guild Wars Wins fan, will be really excited to know, is the Phoenix. Um, the Phoenix is, I mean, look at that guy. Look the at that Phoenix! I love this. He's, he's a very good boy. <laughs> he's a very good boy. The Phoenix is beautiful, one of my very favorites. We also have um, the White Tiger. Les nouveaux pets. And my very personal favorite, a baby siege turtle. Yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't take it. But um, before I gush too much, I will pass it over to Cal to talk about the bunny. Les nouveaux pets. Le phénix, le dragon. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have to roll with it. Uh, quick note about the pets. The pets won't be in for beta. Uh, they'll be in for launch. But we did want to kind of reveal, since we're talking about the Ranger Elite spec, we're going to talk about. Ok, il n'y aura, aura pas les nouveaux pets. Uh, so, bunny thumper. I've Pendant la bêta. Pendant la bêta. Anyone who's played Go Wars 1, like I played Go Wars 1 a lot. A lot of people in the studio have played Go Wars 1 a lot. So when we think Hammer Ranger, just the natural understand. The, the first thing you think about is Bunny Thumper. For anyone who wasn't super familiar with that, les skills we'll sont trollés. Par you, contre, uh, Bunny Thumper, which was <laughs> mais bon, on s'en fout, hein. Mais bon, <laughs> Ranger Warrior Hybrid, because back in Go Wars 1, you could actually dual profession. So Rangers would uh, secondary class warrior in order to get. C'est vrai qu'il y a trois spells, t'as raison. And some other, you know. Crushing blows, crushing blow the name. I'm just going to get complete, completely <laughs> trashed by Go Wars 1 fans, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Crushing blow. Um, but you get, go in for get those hammer skills uh, to set up both, kind of create this more aggressive, very kind of damage CC focused uh, aggressive character that played really well off the pet because a lot of the pet skills care about, you know, like hitting a knockdown target. So you would invest into the warrior class to get access to these knockdowns and create kind of that. Uh, Ranger Warrior Hybrid. It got nicknamed the Bunny Thumper because back in Guild Wars 1, the Ranger had a really funny animation when you ran around with a hammer equipped. And it kind of did a little hop. So nicknamed Bunny Thumper. We thought about, obviously it comes to mind when we, when we talk about Hammer Ranger at any point in time. Uh, Bunny Thumper, maybe not the most official name, so we kind of couldn't name the Elite Spec Bunny Thumper as much as we talked about it. Yeah, it was on the uh, table. <laughs> we did get a nice little reference in here with Skill 5, which is called Thump. Uh, and a very Yay. nice, uh, fun name, name there. But the general idea of the Untamed is we're trying to create this more... We, we do want to get some of the same kind of feelings from... Il y en a encore, il y en a une quatrième, il y en a une quatrième. Really good pet interaction, that gameplay of like comboing with your pet. 
was something we really want to get with the Untamed, making sure that we still have that aggressive kind of identity in there, but we also wanted to create this kind of bruisery character of make give Un bruiser. Ça c'est intéressant, un bruiser. Parce que pour l'instant euh... some aggressive nature and that's what kind of created the unleash mechanic which is kind of the stance swap between offense and defense. So right now I'm actually in the unleash state for the ranger. Uh, and the first thing we'll call out here is that while you are unleashed, uh, your pet is kind of in its base form. But we're, down here you can see that we've kind of exposed all of the pet skills uh, as actual, you know, key bindable actions for the ranger themselves. So all the tail swipe enjoyers in chat, you are now available, you are now allowed to cast tail swipe whenever you so choose, instead of relying on your drake to kind of use it correctly. And this is ah, d'accord. C'est les passifs. And the ranger. C'est les passifs. Tu peux maintenant claquer le passif de ton pet. Incroyable. Incroyable. Yeah, so obviously like more direct control means you don't have to worry about like interrupting your pet when it's going to do something dumb. You can just always know that I'm going to create it. I'm going to set up a combo because maybe I do a knockdown and then my pet's always going to be able to capitalize on that. It really, um, I mean, I, I think it just feels a lot better to have more direct control over that. So it's something I wanted to do for this elite spec. Uh, so the next thing we see is that when you kind of, when you unleash your pet, we see a couple of things flipped over. We saw some of the hammer skills flip over, which we'll get to real quick. Uh, but first, we'll talk about these kind of new pet skills. Uh, there's three new pet skills. These ah oui, d'accord. Là, c'est le pet qui qui est modifié en fait. Here, but they okay. Are more ranger abilities that are cast around the pet location. So kind of like Spurge okay, Shades, d'accord. where the pet is the conduit for Donc, soit c'est le pet. This, uh, this attack. And so the first thing ah, we'll ouais. see off, on Venomous Outburst is we actually also gave a shadow step to ranger pets, because why not? I mean, we're already giving shadow steps to pretty much everyone. So <laughs> Venomous Outburst, it starts with a shadow step in, then does a quick poison uh, AoE. And the cool thing about all of these kind of unleashed pet skills is that they also get a bonus effect against CC targets. So if you hit, the, hit your enemy with thump, knockdown, there's ah, a little ouais, there's some vulnerability on there as well. Next up, Rending Vines. This is going to be an AoE boon rip, and then again, if you hit a crowd control oh. target, this is going to boon. slow your target. And finally, we have enveloping ah. haze, which is this nice projectile hate bubble, little poison field in there, so you can get a nice uh, a little. Ça bit va être trop fort en PP, ça. Oh, I'm same. And if that hits a C, ce spell là, trop fort en PP. Cool down a little bit uh, as well. So next La up, we talk about the distance. Uh, so as we see with the unleash kind of unleash stance swap, this offense-defense toggle that we kind of trying to do, we see oh, that so two through five all flip over. And the one skill doesn't change because it's just a pretty generic hammer auto attack, damage, damage, damage. It doesn't need to do anything too crazy here. But the flavor of these hammer skills is that they're actually the same skill, uh, but a different kind of output of the same skill. So if we start off here with wild swing, okay. when I am not in the Là, tu sur toi et tu mets du cripple, okay. damage and cripple, Then I hop over to the cooldown is shared, that's pretty important, we didn't want to just double the amount of skill. Oui, encore heureux hammer, que les cooldowns sont chers, ouais. Choose your spots. Uh, but the unleashed version of Wild Swing does not do any cripple, it does a lot more damage, and ça also... Ça plus de dégâts, et ça cripple pas, mais c'est, la, c'est le même spell, c'est la même animation, ok. So then moving D'accord, à chaque fois c'est la même animation, mais ça fait un truc uh, so différent the, en fait. The whole idea, again, kind of that defense versus Grâce offense, CC, a lot more CC and disruption truc. on the baseline version of the skill, and then a lot more damage coming out from the unleashed version of the skills. Ok, so we'll just run CC, through these ok. Quick. Overbearing Smash is kind of this two-part attack where you do a very quick initial daze to see potentially two interrupt fois. in there and follow up with this leap uh, for a, a little bit of longer daze to then set up any CC combos that you're looking for. Moving on to Savage Shockwave. This is a kind of three-part expanding small, larger, largest uh, Shockwave skill that's going to do a different condition, immobile on the, on the smallest radius, then weakness and vulnerability as it gets a little bit wider. And as mentioned before, skill 5 is just going to be thump. Very streamlined, <laughs> fun little skill. Oh, c'est incroyable! Oh, c'est team. incroyable en MCM, ça! Oh! Oh, ça va être fou! J'ai trop hâte de tester ça en MCM. J'ai qu'une envie, c'est de tester ça en MCM, là. Ça va être fou. Wild Swing gets some bonus value. Ça va être fou. Unleashed Savage Shockwave is also going to get damage bonus against disabled foes. This is also going to get increased damage per condition on your target. So we saw a lot of condition application from both the pet skills and some of the 
uh, some of the hammer skills on the base side. So Unleash Savage Shockwave, potentially the largest damage potentially uh, dealing skill for this kit. Uh, Overbearing Smash, a little bit different. We're not going to have any days in here. The quick attack here is still going to be potentially a nice uh, reactive blind. So you can kind of blind an incoming attack and then that'll Putain follow vache. up with a more powerful attack that is going tu to... Blind sur la your and you remove two... It's incredible. There's going to be a lot more damage and still kind of trying to be that setup skill even though it's not a CC so it's going to give you Might and Fury per target struck. So cast it, get a bunch of Might then go through, kind of use the rest of your abilities and... Oh, ça va être incroyable. Les meilleurs, les meilleurs qui, qui masteriseront ça, ils vont être trop forts. Genre. Ils vont être trop trop forts. We'll talk, a, we'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about like what the general ideas behind this kind of like shared cooldown and the offense defense stuff a little bit later. Uh, but for now, we'll just stick with the, the high level kind of skills demo that we've we've shown off and move into the cantrips here. So first up, we have Perilous Gift. This is going to be the heal skill. And oh la la, if you would take a lethal damage, ignore it. Defensive stuff. We're going to see a little bit of mobility. But a lot of defense and a lot of crowd control kind of give the tools un de un. to this character to be that frontline uh, aggressive. Bah de rien, en fait. De rien pour ça, en fait. Or kind of more aggressive damage dealer. So starting off with the per Perilous Gift, this is going to be kind of that Hopla. ignore death mechanic that we've seen in a few Hopla. places in the past. Uh, so for a few seconds, you oh, will incroyable. not 1 HP, incroyable. and as you saw, once that buff expired, it drained health from your pet and healed you some amount. So you're going to want to make sure to kind of make sure your pet is healthy. The counterplay there is obviously going to be hitting the pet, uh, and because of that, this is going to prevent you from swapping pets while it's active. So you can't just swap at the last minute and get kind of your full health pet for full value. Uh, next up, we're going to see exploding spores. So this is. Kind of a cool ability where it's going to be a kind of a ring of these spores that are just kind of AoE Voln and damage. Wait, it's actually Cripple now. It used to do Voln, but that was uh, we added Voln on some of the other skills, so now it's Cripple. Uh, and so we see here if all of these spores hit the same target, that target will also be knocked down. So a little bit of a bonus for lining this up really nicely, or potentially chaining it off of another CC. You'll get a nice little knockdown there. Wow. Otherwise, it's just more of that AoE damage and a little bit of Cripple. Next up, we have mutate conditions. This is going to be a big condi cleanse. Convert uh, all, all your conditions itself, into vulnerability. Per condition cleansed. And so potentially tu a lot of bone, but it will be that kind of massive condi cleanse that you really want to see as this kind of frontline melee character. Next up, we have the shadow step that we kind of spoiled previously, unnatural traversal. It's going to be a blink in, a little bit of AOE vulnerability. Oui, That's pretty much it. If you hit anything, you're going to get 50% cooldown refunds. So this is really going to incentivize going in as opposed to using it to get out of fights. And last up, we're going to have a little bit more CC here with Nature's Binding. This is going to be a kind of PBA. We attack that creates these cages. Similar oh mechanic no, that cool. we've seen on Dragon Hunter Longbow where it is Encore this de limo? kind of uh, area denial. Envie de mourir, genre. You can't just walk through unless you happen to have something like stability. And finally, we're going to have the elite skill Forest Fortification. Forest Fortification. And this is the big defensive cooldown of the kit. We see resolution, resistance, stability, damage reduction. And the kind of cool thing about this skill is that <coughs> anytime you hit an enemy while it's active, it's going to refund the cooldown a little bit. So really going to oh, les auto, elle reset le cooldown. What the fuck? Fights, and it's going to be a potentially... Uh, okay, c'est une classe qui a pas trop de dégâts, mais qui a full CC. Et, et qui a l'air d'être incroyable. So quick, Ça va être un There's bruiser quoi. Of, actually, let's start with the miners. Ça That's va vraiment être un bruiser en vrai. Wave start. Natural fortitude, gain vitality. Frontliner bruiser makes sense. Uh, Grandmaster trait, Battle of the Untamed. This is going to be uh, kind of the Comme character damage. defining unleash, the defining mechanic of how unleash functions. Of while you, the, you the ranger are unleashed, tu fais 15% de dégâts et tu prends 10% de dégâts en moins. While your pet is unleashed. You will deal less damage, but you also take less damage. So again, that offense defense toggle. Why your pet? Quoi? J'ai pas vu. And along the top, we'll see some traits that uh, give you value for controlling an enemy. Here we see condition application, depending on target. Here's going to depending on unleash state, rather. Sorry. Uh, here we see boon application, depending on your unleash state. And the grandmaster trait is going to be cooldown reduction uh, every time you crowd control a target. <laughs> quoi? Quatre secondes à chaque CC. Kind of value traits. Cleansing unleash. This is going to be cleanse conditions when you swap. Just another solid source of condition removal. Uh, bolstering unleash. Here's some more boons when you unleash. So it's going to again going into defense. I get protection. Going into offense, I get might. Makes sense. 
And finally, restorative strikes. This is going to be potentially a powerful sustain trade. Oh, là, là, 10% uh, heal yourself des dégâts de zone. Of your outgoing damage. So the more you hit people, the more you get healed. And <laughs> you can, again, as enemies kind of dodge, evade. It's going to Ça va être si fort en so, MCM! What the fuck? Finally, elle est design pour le MCM Mais c'est trop bien parce que le rôdeur a rien pour, euh, pour groupe en MCM C'est trop bien C'est parfait genre C'est trop trop bien C'est trop trop bien And then next up is corrupting vines, which is going to change rending vines into a boon corrupt as opposed to a boon rep. These guys don't have any boons, so you can't really tell. But a little bit more value there because it'd also be condition application on top of boon removal. And finally, The Grandmaster damage trait here, Ferocious Symbiosis. This is going to be. Oh là là, la férocité, ouais, des dégâts de zone, quoi. Enfin, des dégâts. Des dégâts par, euh, par stack, quoi. Comme, euh, comme le vengeur symbolique, quoi. This buff, which is damage and movement speed. So, potentially, some very fast movement, I guess. And obviously, damage is what people can. Oh là là, avec le, avec le blink et tout, là. De l'IMO de zone, du CC de zone. 10 de stab, un anti, un anti die, des CC partout, ça va être incroyable. So there's the speed run of the untamed. We'll come back to it again and talk a little bit more later in the show, but we're going to move on to the mechanist next. Oh là 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 le mécaniste, le mécanicien. With the power and beauty of Jade Tech, they never fight alone. They summon a customized Jade Tech battle mech to fight alongside in combat, calling the shots with powerful mech command skills and mace attacks. Whether it's melee, ranged, or group support, adapt to any situation by choosing the traits that best suit your situation. This engineer mech is truly the all-purpose multi-tool of any Guild Wars 2 squad. Oh là 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 L'ingénieur Le golem L'invocation ultime Oh là 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 All right, welcome back. Engineer Mains, you were so patient. Yours was the last release. We hope it was worth the wait. We're not going to make you wait any longer to hear all the details and to go take it away. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the ah, mechanism is pretty spi. self explanatory. I mean, we've all seen the video. Great. It's the cool spi. <laughs> It's really neat. And one of the reasons I, I especially love this class is it, it, it kind of embodies the heart of modern Kanta. And I, I actually will keep this Le pretty short and sweet to Vraiment. keep some secrets in our pocket still. Yeah. Um, but the, the mechanist, um, basically our lore behind this is that the engineer has crafted and built their very own Jade Tech battle mech, um, which is just the coolest thing. It, it functions very similarly to a ranger pet and that they aid you in battle. Um, Je l'avais dit, ça allait, ça allait uh, fonctionner uh, comme un pet de ranger. Uh, I'll pass it to Cal in just a moment. You you can customize like the skills that you have it used, so it's it's it feels very your own and are kind of the the emotional bond between you and your your uh, mech is is going to be a lot similar to like Timey and Scruffy I, is how I like to look at it. So really sweet, wholesome, but it's just the coolest thing, and it it's and it so really great. does like while well, a lot of our classes dive into the history of Cantha, this one really looks forward to. I mean, what's Kanta been up to for the last mm -hmm. God, 200 years? I don't know. <laughs> so much to find out. <laughs> We have a lot to find out. But without further ado, just because we'll keep those secrets in our pocket, I will pass it to Cal to kind of talk about all the fun things that we can do with the mech. Cal will keep no secrets. Nope. Yeah, but... <laughs> uh, you know, maybe I'll keep a couple secrets. I gotta keep my, my advanced technology on the down low so I can you know, win in ranked, because otherwise I can't. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Good call. Uh, we're just cleaning up some UI elements here, real quick. I ah, he nous cache des trucs, putain. All right. Wow, c'est quoi cette barre de spray? I was wondering why it was just a, you know, what the fuck? In my face, which no one really wants. Incroyable. To see, so. Luckily, we got oh, that figured out, and we're here with the magnet. C'est le skin, c'est le skin des spells, des signes de 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 de, de guerrier, mais genre avec des avec des couleurs changées et tout. C'est trop stylé. That's gonna have some damage. It's gonna have some skills. It's gonna run around with you and attack enemies. Uh, but it's not always active. So you see here, starting off, I do not have the mech active. It's going to be available via crash down. Ce serait incroyable uh, qu'on puisse rentrer dans le mecha et que ce soit une armure parce qu'elle a dit que c'était comme Timey. 
Uh, so I use Crash Down. Oh Mech appears. Launch some launch some dudes. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually do a launch. Launch some dudes. dudes. <laughs> Uh, but it will still do a little bit. Oh, it's too stylish. Yeah. Um, so passed? first things first, see the mech is. I mean, obviously the mech is super cool. It kind of zooms around. Where's it going? <laughs> do and, whatever he wants. You know, <laughs> he, he does in fact zoom around. You're not he does. <laughs> you know, ranger players are used to this. Sometimes yeah. uh, the pet AI kind of has a mind of its own. It has, off. has some ideas. Um, so the, the the mech kind of has the. the oh, il a une barre de. Il a une break bar le le mech de mecha. Ça veut dire qu'en PVP, uh, so il faudra le cesser pour le tuer. Here, we see a similar layout to actually how the untamed had the skills set up. Enfin, pas forcément, tu me diras, mais... To three different kind of command skills, and these are defined by what actually by what traits you select, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, but as you see, as I'm switching out these traits, these skills are actually changing F1, F2, F3. And these traits okay, also but... have other effects, and they okay. will kind of be defining toward the playstyle that you're looking for. With. We're going to see some amount of Connie damage. We're going to see some more power damage or crowd control. We're also going to see a bit more of the support stuff uh, as, a, as an option as well. So there's the opportunity to kind of define the mech and, and how you want how you want it to play. Uh, in addition, it's going to have a couple of baseline skills. So there we saw Jade Siphon. Uh, there's Rocket Punch. Uh, it also has a pretty standard auto attack thing that can do crazy. J'ai envie de le jouer. Uh, but outside Putain. of that, we're going to Grim. see. Uh, we'll run through the, the kind of nine different mech skills that you can have access to here real quick. So starting off with the top line of traits, which is a lot more condition damage focused. Uh, starting off with Rolling Smash. So, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Condi mech is going to do bleeding and some damage in there as well. Next up we're going to have Discharge Array. This is going to be more of a pulsing effect around the mech. That's going to be confusion, a little Attends. bit of slow, a little bit of damage. So again, more of that condition damage style of thing. Uh, and finally, we're going to have the Jade Mortar. This is a pretty long range skill, nice little uh, kind of ballistic projectile there. <laughs> Days, burning, some good damage. Also, an explosion that's relevant. We'll talk about that a little bit more <laughs> as we get into more trade stuff. Ah, uh, so uh, oui, d'accord, oui, c'est une explosion. The Connie damage side of things. Move bottom, bottom line, row of traits here is going to be more power damage, a bit more crowd control as well. So instead, F1, we're going to have access to Spark Revolver, and this is going to be a long range kind of channeled, almost like that kind of rapid fire <laughs> style of attack. In this case, it's going to be piercing, some good damage. We saw vulnerability that's coming. Ça risque de faire beaucoup de dégâts. Hein. Parce que si, si le truc peut uh, envoyer un x12 you know, comme ça pendant que tu es en train de burst, ça va taper. Hein. Ça shot. risque de taper fort. Hein. Nice, very deliberate, well, well defined charge <laughs> up into that. Nice What the fuck? That does a nice, uh, some CC in there, good damage. Uh, that's also an explosion. And Finally, we're going to have Sky Circus. This is coming from the Grandmaster. These effects are incredible. Hein? Wow. This is going to be kind of a two-part attack where the mech's going to jump into the air, fire some projectiles, and it's also going to come crashing down. And I wasn't close enough to my enemies, but it will come crashing down and kind of launch, uh, launch all of the nearby enemies in the radius. So potentially, you know, multiple crowd control skills here, some good power damage as well, uh, a solid option for the mech. Then finally, along the middle here, we're going to see more of that uh, kind of more support style of gameplay. Okay, Starting off barrière, with là. the F1 skill. F1 skill is actually still the more damage, but it is going to have to be pulse de la barrière damage. autour de lui. We saw, you know, condition damage or just more damage. Uh, here we have explosive oh, attack. It's going to have this nice. Tu l'as vu ou pas? Get some weakness in there and a nice damaging attack. Next up, we're going to have crisis zone. This is going to be Self cleanse for the mech because it doesn't really have too much Connie removal. Cinq personnes uh, so à la critique. A little bit of Connie cleanse there, but also some very good. Ah, c'est éclaté en fait. Ah, c'est éclaté en fait. And alacrity, of course, is one of the premier boons that you're going to be looking for. And finally, coming out from the Grandmaster Saw, we're going to have barrier burst, and it's going to be more of like a barrier channeled burst. ability, some nice pulsing, pulsing oh. barrier, uh, a lot of might, a lot of fury, a lot of vigor, and. Some more oh, alacrity, stylé, that's actually ça. coming from another trait that we'll talk about as oh, well. Uh, but there, there's kind of like the stylé. support kit of the mech. And obviously you can kind of mix and match these as you choose, depending on what you're looking for. Maybe ah oui, j'avoue qu'il a changé uh, de skin. T'as raison, ouais, j'avais pas fait gaffe. Take, you know, core reactor shot and stuff. T'as raison, j'avais pas fait gaffe. Outside of that, it's very much like a ranger pet. It does kind of, uh, I mean, it exists in the world. Mais du coup, c'est dommage. If it dies, it will go bon. away. Uh, obviously there's only one of them, there's no really pet swap. Pet swap mechanic or anything. Uh, the cooldown here is very long on death. 
So and obviously these, are, these numbers are still things that we're going to be looking at and tuning to figure out kind of what the right what the right cooldown for the match is. But we didn't want to be always accessible like with Ranger Pets. Ça va être incroyable ça. Like with, kind of Des gigas giga dégâts de zone avec un max de what monde. What does the mech pet character look like? Si tout le monde a un mecha à côté de lui, enfin genre. Ranger or a better Ranger, we wanted to kind of have a different. Et s'il y a des rôdeurs à côté? So we'll talk. Obviously, there's a lot more to talk about with the mech on kind of the trait side once we get there. Sans monde de série, mais que s'il meurt. Si tu l'enlèves toi, il a moins. Um, so the mace, it's kind of this, a little bit of a hybrid, uh, a, there's a very small amount of support stuff going on here, but there's also some pretty good condi damage, so here we see the auto attack, confusion, confusion, and then some AoE barrier. Confusion, confusion, and barrier. Skill 2, we have energizing slam, here's a little bit of mobility, jump in. Jure, c'est le 3 de masse de, du revenant, incroyable. <laughs> and then finally we have rocket fist prototype, here's a little bit of a ranged projectile attack. Un rocket fist very short stun. qui stun C'est de la... C'est pas ouf Et finalement, nous allons parler des utility skills. Donc, le plus important, l'ingénieur a finalement eu accès aux signets et est maintenant un exclusif membre du 5 signet club parce que seulement you know, une handful de classes ont accès à un heal signet et un elite signet. Bon ça c'est un pied avec une zone donc ça c'est un shadow step. Déjà. Par contre là il y a un sablier. Non. Uh, heals Uh, so moins 10% incoming damage, moins 10% incoming damage, moins 10 damage, 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 damage condition. Next up we have barrier signet, here's some damage reduction on the passive, and this is also going to create a projectile hate dome. Uh, so there's a couple of these signets that interact with the mech. Uh, in this case, it creates the dome around the mech. If the mech is not active, it'll just create the dome around myself. Uh, and you also see we're getting a little bit barrier in there as well. Next up we have force signet, here's a stun break, always useful. This is also going to create kind of a knockback <laughs> region around either yourself or your mech. And uh, I mean that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. Get some cripple in there as well. Next up we have shift signet. Here's the shadow step that again kind of slows a little bit. Both you and your mech will teleport to the targeted area. Uh, mech guys. Sometimes the mech is you know doing its own thing. It doesn't want to teleport. It wants to use its cool jets and <laughs> kind of fly over here instead. Uh, but yeah, a lot yeah. of the time it will t you know teleport with you. Ça va être si fort. Uh, and then finally we have super conducting signet. Here's okay. condition damage buff. And it's also going to be kind of this AOE condition field. Here's some, here's Les animations some here's some sont incroyables C'est un truc de ouf What the fuck, genre And then finally we have Overclock Signet. Uh, the passive here is that your signet, other signet recharges are going to be reduced, so a little bit of value for pressing those. Alternatively, un signe qu'on dit, un signe power, un signe d'anti-projectile et un signe de CC. Ouais. Ils sont pas fichés like, en vrai. Hein. They got stuck in the animation. That's hilarious. Never seen that before. Um, cool. But yeah, you know, big elite skill, mech attack, super cool. Merde, j'ai pas vu. And Le laser, c'était ça là? Also, if the mech is not active, it will also just summon your mech. We don't actually need to show that right now. Uh, so then, coming back to the traits, just gonna run through these real quick. Obviously, they have like a secondary effect in addition to kind of defining what your mech skills are. So starting across the top, we're gonna see that kind of condition damage build coming out, where your mech is gonna apply bleeding on hit. And, well, that's pretty much it. I guess we should probably start with the miners. I always forget, every single time. It's always like, maybe we should start with the minor traits. Probably a good idea. <laughs> so one thing, one unique aspect that we're going to see on a lot of these traits is that the mech inherits stats from the engineer. Or from the mechanist. Right? Toughness so and vitality. I build, if I build here, du I'm mecha get to my mech. So that's kind of a cool uh, disconnect from ranger pets where they're kind Toughness of always... Et vitality. Ranger pets are always have their predefined stats, whereas the mech... You're going to say, okay, I'm building Berserker, super aggressive. My mech is also super aggressive. But if I build uh, something like Minstrel, super defensive, then my mech is going to also be super defensive. So we're going to see toughness and vit being inherited by the D'accord, d'accord, ok. D'accord, ok. Le, 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 le mecha, il a la moitié de tes spells ou 100% de Already tes spells. Ok, d'accord. Va de, ton, de uh, tes stats. Ok, j'ai compris. C'est dans ce sens-là, en fait. Condition damage and expertise inherited by the mech. Again, here's your condition build for the mech. And finally, we have Jade Dynamo. It's okay, in fact, it's like if it was your ally, in fact. Right here, because it's actually going, to, actually going to allow your mech to inherit from the explosive trait line. There's obviously a lot going on here, so we'll save that for the latter half of the show. 
Uh, but other than that, it is going to be just a kind of solid value trade. Your mech's going to do explosions and attacks, and if your mech is not active, it'll do a little supporty area, area strike. So as we go across the middle, we're going to see again, instead of the bleeding on hit, we're going to do AoE might, so again, more of that boon support. And then the frame in the center is going to be inheriting concentration and healing power. Again, support, support, support. Also giving alacrity whenever you apply barrier. <laughs> so a lot, a lot more alacrity potential. <laughs> serait, well. cool, ça. And finally, the Grandmaster slot here is going to have, uh, obviously give you barrier burst, but it's also going to have your mech do a pulsing AoE barrier on kind of an interval. That's also going to give you alacrity if you have the channeling conduits. And finally, across the bottom, we're going to see more of that power, power damage, and crowd control. So here we have Volnon hit. Melee attack become ranged. Uh, instead of bleeding, instead of might, <laughs> you can send your Volnon enemies. And kind of the same vein we have here is the stat inheritance trait on the master tier, power, precision, and ferocity, all inherited by your mech in good quantities. And finally, we're going to have access to J -Drive, mech core J drive, which is going to be kind of the signet uh, bonus trait here, which is. Signet passes are better. They're also going to maintain that signet passes. Signet effectiveness cool increase 20%. <laughs> and this is also going to. Attends, est-ce qu'il y a aussi que je les share aux alliés ou pas? Grand zéro passif bonus. So a lot more. Ouais, bon ça c'est un PI quoi. Super quoi. high level speed run as with everything that we already did uh, to kind of keep these a little bit more concise, kind of spare the majority of people from my excess rambling, which we will now. Well, well, we'll hop back to Ruby for a little bit of a wrap up here, and then we'll come back to plenty of excessive rambling for all of these elite specializations. I just want to make sure we are very clear that the excessive rambling from Cal is very welcome. Mm -hmm. um, never apologize for that because you're fantastic at it, and chat loves it. So we're going to have more rambling in just a few minutes. This was your speed run through the overview of the Spectre for the Thief, the Untamed for the Ranger, and the Mechanist for the Engineer. Those are the final three reveals for End of Dragons Elite Specializations for the classes. You can try them yourself starting next week, October 26th on Tuesday. Okay, it's our next Elite Specialization Beta event. It is open to all of you with a Guild Wars 2 account. All you have to do is log Ça in commence after the event starts. Le 26. And you will find some beta characters there waiting for you. That goes on until Saturday the 30th of October.